moved by load x divided by the load and distance moved by effort times 100 percent so we can we arrange this as efficiency is equal to load times distance over e times y times 100 all over one efficiency therefore is equal to load over effort times x over y times 100 percent now recall that velocity ratio is y over s that is the distance moved by effort divided by the distance moved by load and also the mechanical advantage is equal to load over effort we can therefore say that efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage times the reciprocal of the velocity ratio times 100 percent since y over s is the reciprocal of x over y so therefore efficiency is equal to mechanical advantage all over velocity ratio times 100 percent Now we can distinguish between various types of machine. We have generally six types of machine. So let's take a look at the six types of machine. The first one is a lever. Let us explain the lever as a machine. A lever or levers are simple machine that consist of a rigid bar or a rod that is pivoted around a fixed point called a fulcrum. So the image here is that of a lever. The lever consists of the fulcrum, which is also known as the pivot, and a point where the effort is applied and the other end of a bar where the load is to be lifted or moved. The fulcrum acts as a point of support and levers are used to multiply or change the direction of forces. So you can either use them to change the direction of forces or multiply forces. So there are basically three types of levers so we are going to differentiate between the three types of levers now so the three types of lever are classified based on the relative position of the following the fulcrum which is also known as the pivot the load that is the object that is being moved or lifted and the effort, which is the force applied to move the load. Okay, let's take a look at each type of lever. The first type of lever is the first class lever. A first class lever has the fulcrum in between the load and the effort. So you can see the diagram of the first class lever here with a fulcrum always in between the load and the effort. The velocity ratio is usually greater than one, but may be less than one, or it can also be equal to one. Examples of first class levers are one, a seesaw, two, a pair of pliers, three, a crowbar, and four, a pair of scissors. In all of these examples, you can see that the fulcrum is always in between the load and the effort that is being what applied. Second class lever. In a second class lever, the load is located between the fulcrum and the effort. So this is the image or the diagram of second class lever. Here you can see that the load is in between the fulcrum and the applied force, which is also known as the effort. The velocity ratio and mechanical advantage 
of a second class labor is always greater than one. Let us take a look at some of examples of second class levers. They include one, a wee barrel, two, a nut cracker, and three, a bottle opener. In all of these examples, you can see that the load is always in between the focal and the effort. And finally, the third class lever. In a third class lever, the effort is located between the focal and the load. The image below is that of a third class lever. Here you can see that the effort is between or in between the load and the focal. The mechanical advantage and velocity ratio are always less than 1. So, some of the examples of third class lever include 1. The broom 2. A fishing rod 3. Thongs And finally, the forearm So, in all of these in all of these examples, the effort is always between the load and the focal or the support. The next type of machine is a pulley. A pulley is a wheel with a grooved ring and rope or cable that runs along the groove. So you can see the diagram of a single fist pulley with the effort applied with, through a rope to lift a load at the other end. Pulleys can be fist or moving. We have for fist pulleys, they change the direction of the force. Movable pulleys provide a mechanical advantage by reducing the effort needed to lift a load. If there is no friction, then the effort must be equal to the load. And hence, the mechanical advantage is called the velocity ratio, which is equal to 1. The mechanical advantage increases as the number of pulleys increases. The velocity ratio is equal to the number of pulleys or rows connecting the pulleys. Here, we have a system of four pulleys which has a velocity ratio of 4 because we have 4 pulleys connected, connected with 4 ropes between the pulleys and on the other side we have a system of 5 pulleys with a velocity ratio equal to 5 because we have 5 pulleys connected, connected together with 5 ropes. Next is the inclined plane. So here is the diagram of the inclined plane with the effort applied along the plane to lift the load through a vertical distance S. The velocity ratio of the inclined plane is equal to the distance moved by effort all over the distance moved by load. So the distance moved by effort is Y from the diagram divided by the distance moved by load, which is x. So the velocity ratio is equal to the reciprocal of the sine of the angle between the inclined plane and the horizontal. So VR is equal to 1 over sine theta. The coefficient of friction from the inclined plane can be calculated using mu is equal to sine theta divided by cos theta. And that is going to be equal to tan theta. So the coefficient of static friction can be calculated using tan theta. Next is the wedge. Here is a diagram of a wedge used to split a very hard wood into two parts. It is a combination of two inclined planes. It is used to split or separate bodies held by large forces. For example, Axe, chisels, knives, and any other tool that can be used for cutting are all examples of wedges. The mechanical advantage 
is equal to the load divided by the effort or the applied force and that is going to be equal to the slant height divided by the width or the thickness of the wedge. Next is the screw and the screw jack. Here we have a diagram of the screw jack. The screw jack can be considered as an inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder. The velocity ratio of the incline of the screw jack is equal to 2 pi L divided by P. Here L is the length of the tummy bar and P is what of the pitch of the screw jar. The pitch of the screw jar is the distance between successive threads on the screw jar. Next is the wheel and azole. So here you have a diagram of the wheel and azole. The wheel and azole uses a wheel with a rod attached in the middle as an azole to help it to lift or move loads. In some cases, the wheel and azole works like a lever to multiply force, like the one we have in doorknobs or in fishing reels. In other cases, it is used to move objects easier, such as with wheels on a bicycle. The velocity ratio of the wheel and azure is equal to the circumference of the wheel divided by the circumference of the azure. So V arrow is going to be equal to 2 pi big arrow divided by 2 pi small arrow. And when we simplify that, V arrow, that's the velocity ratio, is going to be big arrow divided by small arrow. We have big arrow is the radius of the wheel and small arrow is the radius of the small wheel. So we can write the velocity arrow a ratio of the wheel and arrow as the radius of the wheel divided by the radius of the arrow. The mechanical advantage is as usual equal to the load divided by now, the extension of the wheel and azo is the gear wheel, or the gear and wheel. So the diagram we have here is that of two gears that are meshing. So we have the driver gear and the driven gear. And this is that of a bed and pulley drive. They work similarly, or the velocity ratio are similar. So the velocity ratio of this machine is going to be defined as the number of teeth of the driven gear or wheel divided by the number of teeth of